Okay, let's understand absolute value and I'm going to try to keep this video right around 10 minutes. I might go a little bit shorter or maybe a little bit longer, but if you stick with me, you're going to you know, really um, upgrade your knowledge of absolute value or maybe you pretty much know a lot about absolute value, you just want to uh, review. So if you're new to my channel, I am a math teacher, teach middle school, high school, even some college. So I love teaching. Uh, hopefully you'll consider subscribing if you like uh, what you're going to see in this particular video. And one other thing too, uh, if you really do like my teaching style, I'll leave the link in the description uh, below to my full complete uh, learning program, various levels of math, and I go really above and beyond what I do on uh, YouTube. But with that being said, let's understand absolute value. So much confusion here. So here is let's just do a real basic thing here let's say absolute value of negative three now let's just start from the very very beginning what like how do you even recognize like absolute value well absolute value you recognize because it has these little bars around a number or an algebraic expression okay so this would be the absolute value of negative three this is the absolute value of x plus one okay these long little bars so when you see these bars not something like this, not grouping symbols or parentheses or these type of deals, specifically these little straight up and down vertical bars. Okay, that's absolute value in mathematics. Now, just um, as an aside, real quick, there is something uh, later on, it looks like this. If you're studying a little bit more advanced algebra, they have long vertical bars, they're longer. This is um, finding the determinant of a matrix. So you don't want to confuse this with absolute value. But with that being said, let's just stick with the absolute value, real basic uh, situation like this. Now, what I hear a lot from students when they're first learning mathematics, you know, the basic uh, algebra level or middle school level, they'll say, oh, the absolute value of a number is the positive version of the number, right? So the absolute value of negative three, most of you would would know that that is a positive three. So what's the absolute value of positive three? Most of you out there would say, oh, that's just positive three. So you would be correct. However, your understanding of the definition oftentimes is the absolute value means the positive version of any number, whether it's positive or negative, and that's not correct, okay? We really need to understand what the definition of absolute value is because this is gonna come into play and later um, different topics of absolute value. So as you progress in your math education, you're going to be learning about absolute value, working with just the basic uh, operation of it. And then you're going to be learning absolute value equations. I'm going to make various videos. I probably already have them on my YouTube video. Certainly solve a lot of these problems, but um, you can study absolute value equations, absolute value inequalities, absolute value graphs, and there's even some other things in there as well. So it's a big topic in algebra. Let's get back to the what we want to um, accomplish in this video is just understanding the essence of absolute value. So what is absolute value? Now these two problems with three I answered correctly. Okay, The absolute value of negative three is a positive three, and the absolute value of a positive three is a positive three. So what is absolute value? Well, absolute value is actually technically by definition the distance a, num a number is from zero on a number line. So this is a number line. Number line. You've probably seen this. We really want to refer to this as the real number line, but that's kind of an aside topic. So here we have zero in the middle. We go out one, two, three and as we continue to the right numbers get larger right and in this way as we go to the left we go we numbers get smaller so we have negative one negative two negative three so what i'm saying here is the absolute value of negative three and the absolute value of three are both positive three so what does that mean well what it means is that the distance the distance negative three is from zero is in fact three units away. Okay. Now this is a real big um, uh, point that I'm going to make. Distance, distance is always measured in positive units. Okay. We kind of there's another word out there, a little technical. It says it's like displacement. 
or distance positive unit. So if you had like a kind of roar and you said, hey, you know, uh, or a tape measure you said, go ahead and tell me from zero to negative three how, you know, how far away is that? And you might say, well, that's three units, but not your tape measure or your ruler is not going to be saying negative units. Now, likewise, three to zero is also three units away. Okay. So these are positive values. Again, distance is always positive. So the definition of absolute value is the distance a number is from zero on the number line. Okay, you really, really need to understand that. So let's take a look at um, a couple of basic type of problems. Let's say I have something like this. Two times the absolute value negative three minus the absolute value of seven. So let's do a couple little arithmetic problems. So if you want to pause the video and try this yourself, you know, go right ahead. I'm going to go ahead and solve it now. So what you want to do here is let's just go ahead and um, take care of these absolute value uh, functions right now. So this would be two times the absolute value of negative three is what? Positive three. So let's write that like this. Minus the absolute value of a positive seven is simply seven. So we can just write this problem now in this manner. So we went from the absolute values into actual just numbers, okay? So now we just finish this up. Two times three is what? Six. Six minus seven. Hopefully you did not say one, okay? The answer is negative one. So if you're studying absolute value at this point, you likely have already studied positive and negative numbers, okay? And, how, and the, the rules of those, very, very important. A lot of students mess, you know, mess this up. So this is just a real basic illustration of working with absolute values in, um, in uh, you know, basic order of operation type of problems. Now let's take a look at something a little bit different, okay? I'm gonna uh, write a real basic absolute value equation. So the absolute value of x is equal to three, okay? So what is x? What, obviously x is a variable, right? So it's a variable in algebra, but what really is a variable, okay? Here's a little pop quiz. A variable is what? Well, it's some number, right? So any variable, x, y, whatnot, just represents some number. So I wanna take a look at this absolute value equation Let's do it kind of like differently. Let's say the absolute value of some number, the absolute value of some number is equal to three. Okay. Now, hopefully, you can figure this out. If I said, "Hey, uh, uh, Sarah, you know what's I got? I got some number here, and its absolute value is equal to three. What is that number?" Okay. Some number is its absolute value is equal to three. Well, you would say, "Oh yeah. Well, you're probably plugging in three and you would be correct. But also I could find the absolute value of negative three and that would also be correct, okay? So the main thing that you wanna remember about absolute value equations is there's always two solutions, always two solutions to absolute value of um, uh, absolute value equations, okay? Oh, there's always gonna be two solutions. Now, real quick, I'm gonna just uh, write something out. Two X plus one absolute value of two plus x plus one is equal to nine and absolute value of two x plus one is less than nine. Okay, so I have an absolute value equation and an absolute value inequality. I'm not going to get into these, but I wanna make a point um, as we wrap up this video, okay? Both of these look pretty similar. However, the way we solve them is completely different. So another very common mistake is students, they'll, they'll see an absolute value equation and they'll start doing what you do for an inequality. They'll confuse this with this. And that is what happens when you just try to remember math like uh, in a rote way, okay? I don't know if you're familiar with that word, rote. That just means like trying to learn math by just a bunch of flashcards, not truly learning it, but just trying to remember it. Like, okay, I'm just gonna remember all this stuff, da da da, I hate it, gonna remember it by looking at it a million times and just hope I kind of remember it for, the, for a test. That's not the way to approach mathematics because you're gonna end up confusing things. Now, how do I know this? Because I've been teaching for several years and you know, you just see the mistakes students make. 
So everything I'm um, telling you here comes from years of experience. So as you get into these topics, you may not have um, started to study this yet, but you will. You're going to um, you gotta you know you gotta be careful here that you don't confuse these two. But I can go on and on. We can even talk about the absolute value uh, graph. I'll just tell you very briefly: the graph of an absolute value function is a V-looking thing. You can have a, an up V a down type of V situation and that's even for another video but absolute value very critical in algebra and mathematics so you definitely need to know it and hopefully this video helped you out again if you like my teaching style um, please consider subscribing to my channel I, right now literally I have hundreds of YouTube videos that will uh, help you out for sure and I'm posting like all the time every day so if you like my my work and my teaching style then um, hopefully you consider following me again if you're looking for something extremely comprehensive like my best you know learning material then you want to check out the link uh, below and I have all different type of courses various math levels so you can check that out if you like and if you like the video I would certainly appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback how are things going in your math class are you struggling in a particular area what's working for you do you have any other questions I try to read as many comments as I can I do get a lot of comments on my videos which I'm grateful for but um, you know lets me know how I'm doing and also gives me ideas for future videos but with that being said I hope I've kept it pretty close to 10 minutes um, I wish you all the best in your math class thanks for watching and have a great day